Hey everyone, this is Mr. Ornelas, and I am here today to bring you a lesson as part of our new life sciences unit. In this unit, we are learning about organisms that live in the Pacific Ocean. An organism, as you learned in your Quizlet, is a living thing. So a plant, an animal. We're going to talk today about an organism, an animal, that lives in the Pacific Ocean. This is one of my favorite animals, favorite organisms, and that is the sea otter. This is going to be today what we call a pictorial input chart. I'm going to be going through and teaching you facts in different categories about a sea otter. We'll do this again tomorrow with another organism, but today I want you to sit, listen, and watch. You will be stopping at certain points with your teacher to talk about information you've learned about the sea otter. Let's begin. So the name of the organism that we're studying today is the sea otter. And the sea otter lives in the epipelagic zone. The epipelagic zone is the zone that goes all the way to the surface of the water. So as you can see in this picture here, there's a sea otter. And that sea otter lives in the epipelagic zone. And it comes up above the surface as well. Here it is floating somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. And you'll notice that there's some sort of plant on that animal. And we're going to talk more about what that is in just a few moments. Now let's talk about a description, how we describe this animal. Well, the sea otter is the smallest marine mammal. Now, if you remember, a mammal is an animal or an organism that gives birth to its young. Marine simply means that it lives in the ocean. So it's a, the smallest marine or ocean animal. It is also part of something called the phylum chordata. And that means that it has a backbone, just like you and I. Now, where does this organism, the sea otter, live? What is its habitat? Well, the sea otter likes to live close to shore, and it lives among giant kelp forests. And those organisms, the sea otter, can be found along the Pacific coast of California and all the way up to Alaska. Here's a picture of a sea otter and it is in the kelp forest. What you might notice here is that those right there are uh, two babies. And you can see here that they're actually wrapped in kelp. They live among the kelp forest. And here is another piece of kelp in this photo. So let's talk a little bit about the kelp forest. This will also help us understand um, information about how the kelp forest and the sea otter live together. First, we need to talk about their diet because that's going to help us understand the importance of the kelp forest. So what do sea otters eat? Diet refers to their what they eat. They are carnivorous, which means they are meat eaters. And one of their favorite things to eat is this right here, which is called a sea urchin. A sea urchin is an organism that lives at the very bottom of the ocean. They also love crabs and clams. Now, the sea urchin and the sea otter and the kelp forest have a very interesting relationship. Let's talk about it. Well, 
The sea urchin actually eats the kelp. So the sea urchin needs the kelp to survive. It climbs onto the kelp, it chews it, and eats it. Well, the kelp forest doesn't want to be eaten. So thankfully, the sea otter eats the sea urchin, which helps the kelp forest grow. The kelp forest, as we talked about, is helpful to the sea otter because as you see in this picture here, sea otters, being that they're mammals, give birth to their young, and they actually wrap themselves and their young in the kelp forest so that they can go and hunt for their food and their babies are safe and don't float away. So there's a relationship between the kelp and the sea otter. I'm gonna stop now and I want you to discuss this question. I'll read it and then you'll stop and discuss with your teacher. The question is this. Based on what you've learned, I want you to describe the relationship between a sea otter and a kelp forest. And I apologize for the typos there of the question marks. But describe the relationship between a sea otter and the kelp forest. I'm going to pause or your teacher's going to pause and discuss. Okay, good. So you discussed something. Hopefully you noticed that there's a relationship where they help each other out. This is called interdependence. I'm gonna say that and you could even repeat it back. Interdependence. Interdependence means that those organisms, the kelp forest and the sea otter, need each other to survive, to grow, and to reproduce. And so that kind of relationship is an important one, one that we're going to see in other organisms that we study. So let's go back to the pictorial input chart. Now, a sea otter, like many other organisms, has actually adapted to survive, to grow its body, to grow its young, and to reproduce, have babies, in its environment. And it has done this both externally on the outside of its body and internally. So let's talk about some of the external adaptations that the sea otter has. Well, one of the things the sea otter has that you can see here is oily fur. Their fur has a thick oil which allows them to be buoyant. That means that they can float. Not only does it help them float, but it helps them stay very warm in the cold Pacific Ocean in their habitat. Another thing that sea otters have here off their nose are close-able nostrils. When they dive down deep to swim in the ocean to hunt, they can close their nostrils and that helps them from getting water into their body. So they have thick, dense, oily fur. They have closable nostrils. And what you can't see here very well, but maybe if you look carefully, they have webbed feet. They have webbed feet. And those webbed feet act like flippers so that they can swim fast. Okay. So not only do they have adaptations, and this is to for growth, for survival, and reproduction. And not only do they have external, uh, external adaptations, they also have internal, on the inside, internal adaptations. Well, what are some of those? Well, they have larger kidneys, and kidneys actually filter your blood. So they have larger kidneys, and those kidneys filter the salt water, actually. So 
filter salt water so that they can actually drink the ocean water. They also have much larger lungs than most organisms. And the reason they have larger lungs is that it allows them to breathe underwater for longer. And when they breathe in deep, they take in a lot of air. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to stop and I'd like you to talk about this question. How might or how does a sea otter's external adaptations help it to survive, grow, and reproduce? How does its external adaptations on the outside help it grow, survive, and reproduce? I'm going to go back to that slide so that you can see. Your teacher is going to pause and you're going to discuss. Go ahead. Good. Welcome back. You probably discussed that some of its features, like its thick fur with its dense oiliness or its nostrils, are all things that allow it to float, to swim well, and to stay warm. If it can stay warm, then it's able to find uh, food. It's able to keep its body temperature up so that it can grow, and those are going to help it survive. I'd like you to do the same thing that we just did, but this time... I'd like you to think about how a sea otter's internal adaptations help it grow and reproduce. You're going to discuss with your teacher now, and I will go back to the slide. How does a sea otter's internal adaptations help it survive, grow, and reproduce? Discuss now. All right. Well, you probably discussed how it has larger kidneys and it can filter salt water so it can actually drink salt water, which we as humans can't drink. It has very large lungs so that it can breathe um, underwater for longer. It can float. Um, and so those are some of the ways its internal functions allow it to survive in the Pacific Ocean. We also discussed today that there's an interdependence in terms of the habitat of the sea otter, how it depends on the kelp forest to survive, and how the kelp forest depends on the sea otter. So that interdependent relationship is very important. I hope you enjoyed learning about the sea otter with me today. It's like I said, it's one of my favorites. You're gonna learn about another really cool organism tomorrow. And that is all for today. Take care.